ですか A very good morning. You're joining ITN News and I'm Vibhuda Vijay Bandara. First, let's have a look at today's headlines. The president instructs the officials to take measures to remove barriers to local industries. The Sri Lanka Freedom People's Alliance to be registered. The Committee on Public Finance will fill the proposal for the amendment to the vote on account. And from news overseas, the IMF forecasts a cut in global economy. UN says Idlib displacement overwhelming relief effort. And now for news in detail. President Gotabe Rajapaksa has instructed the officials to take measures to remove barriers to local industries and promote investments. The President made the comment when he met members of the National Task Force for the Advancement of Industries and Entrepreneurship yesterday. The President drew attention on issues faced by the investors and manufacturers when obtaining services from the government agencies. He pointed out that obstacles to commencing industries are a serious problem and detrimental to the prosperity of the country. The President stated that it is regrettable that some, med some social media and environmental organizations keep silence over illegal issues. Minister Vimal Veeramansa, State Minister Dayasiri Jayasekara and Secretary to the President Dr. P. B. Jayasundara were part of the discussion. The Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna and the Sri Lanka Freedom Party together with several other political parties have handed over the application applications to the Elections Commission for the registration of the new political alliance, the Sri Lanka Freedom People's Alliance. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa has been appointed as the leader of the new alliance and the Lotus Bud will be the official emblem of the alliance. The chairmanship of the new alliance will be held by former President Maitri Palasiri Sena. Former Minister Basil Rajapaksa has been appointed as the General Secretary of the UPFA, while Minister Vimal Veerawansa and Dayasiri Jayasekar have been named as the national organisers. The Committee on Public Finance will field a proposal for the amendment to the vote on account for the purpose of obtaining approximately 367 billion rupees. Subsequent to the approval of the committee, the proposal will be submitted to the House for debate on the 20th of this month. In addition, the National Building Tax Amendment Bill, Economic Service Charges Amendment Bill and the Ports and Airport Development Levy Amendment Bill, along with three bills, will be discussed at the committee's meeting. The Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, Speaking at the Global Women's Forum in Dubai says there may be a cut in global economy that they are still hoping would be in the 0.1 to 0.2 percentage space due to coronavirus epidemic. The coronavirus epidemic could damage global economic growth this year, the IMF had said, but a sharp and rapid economic rebound could follow. Georgieva highlighted that there is still a great deal of uncertainty. In its January update to the World Economic Outlook, the IMF lowered the global economic growth forecast in 2020 by a 0.1 percentage to 3.3 percent, following a 2.9 percent growth the previous year, the lowest in a decade. Compared to the impact of the SARS in 2002, she said China's economy then made up just 8 percent of the global economy. Now that figure is 19 percent. World Bank Group Senior Director for Gender Karen Grohn called on Health, Nutrition and Indigenous Medicine Minister Pavitra Wanyarachi in Colombo. Grohn visited Sri Lanka to engage with government counterparts and World Bank Group staff and partners on gender issues including women's entrepreneurship, female labour force participation and women's safety and identify opportunities for further collaboration. The objective of this meeting is to discuss about the programs implemented to prevent the physical and mental abuse of children, sexual assaults, child abuses and social problems in Sri Lanka. They also discuss many solutions and interventions already implemented with the support from development partners and the private sector. 
Bodhubala Sena General Secretary Venerable Galagodate Nyan Sarathera and two defendants appeared before the Court of Appeal regarding a case alleged regarding a case of alleged contempt of court. The Court of Appeal postponed the hearing of the case to May 13th. Nyana Saratera and two others have been accused of violating the Mulative Additional Magistrates Court order to prevent the cremation of the Buddhist clergy at Guru Kanda Raja Mahavihari premises. Meanwhile, the brother of former minister Rishad Badiuddin has been released on bail. He is accused of forging a deed of 40 acres of land in Talay Manna, valued to the tune of 24 million rupees. Minister of Education Dr. Bandula Gunawardhan states that by adding Japanese language to university education, many foreign employment opportunities will be available for the country's youth. He said this participating at the occasion of enrolling 760 students to the Sri Lanka Technological Campus, MIPE. Students who have followed the GCE Advanced Level Technology stream will be able to pursue further education through this university. Engineering, Information Technology and Switch System Technology will be taught at the new university. Scholarships were given for ch 10 children of Vohiro's families. The minister noted that to meet the development goals, it is crucial to increase the number of science graduates in the country. With that, we end today's ITN News. Have a pleasant day.